<laughs> hey, thanks so much for joining. Of course. How's it going? It's good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You're based in Montreal, right? Yes. Cool. Um, but you're originally from Ottawa? Yes. Yeah. So, like, when did you make the move to Montreal? I moved to Montreal to go to university, actually. So I was 18. And, yeah, I came here to go to university. And I just ended up staying after I graduated. Did you did you ever consider anywhere else? Well, for school, I had it sort of drilled into me that, like, Montreal was my only option. Because my mom used to live in Montreal. My aunt used to live in Montreal. And my stepmom went to the same university as me. So I was kind of always being pushed um, in that direction and like geographically it's only two hours away from Ottawa my hometown so it just seemed like a good choice not too far away from home close enough my mom actually told me she said if you go anywhere further I'm not coming to visit you (laughs) so so that's um, what I chose but I ended up studying abroad in Australia because I'd always been obsessed with Australia so I studied abroad there and that gave me like my sort of far from home fix Cool, cool. Um, to do with studying abroad, like, why did you choose Australia? Because it's pretty far away. So yeah. So why did you want to go there? So there's a few reasons. Um, I think my main reason actually was because of YouTube. So okay. I used to watch, like, when I was, I would say, in high school and my early university days, I watched so many Australian YouTubers. Like, mm-hmm. Shani Grimmond was one of my favorites, Sarah's Day. Um, and there was a few others as well. And I just, I also was obsessed with like Kayla Itzinas on Instagram. So there was a lot of girls that I looked up to who were all from Australia and I loved their lifestyle. And like, I just, I love warm climate and I love the beach. Um, and so I thought that, you know, it's somewhere that I would want to go. And then earlier in my university career, I got sent to Australia for like a case competition, which I guess if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's it's like a business school competition, I guess. Like they make a game out of solving business problems. And so me and like a few team members, we got to go to Melbourne for oh that. God. And I just, I loved, like everyone in Australia I thought was so nice, so cool. <laughs> I loved the lifestyle and I was like, I have to come back here. So that's why I chose right. to study abroad there. Cool. So whereabouts did you study abroad? In Wollongong? Yeah. Know. Where are you from? I'm from New Zealand. I Oh, you're from New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> because of your time zone, I thought I thought yeah. it was uh, Australian. Okay, so I've where, been, to, where I've been to Melbourne and Sydney, but I haven't been to Wollongong. <laughs> yeah, Wollongong. There's nothing like it's a college town. Like it's there's okay. not much there. What city in New Zealand are you um, in? Auckland. Okay, cool. Yeah. I wanted to go there. Yeah, I wanted to go there while I was studying abroad, but uh, it was too expensive. <laughs> okay, so where did you get to travel anywhere else? Like where did you? I'm really lucky. We got to go, I got to go to a lot of places. I went to, in Australia, I went to uh, Sydney because that was two hours yeah. from Wollongong. And then I went to Melbourne. I went to Perth. Oh, really? And, yeah, I went to Brisbane. And then we went a little bit down the coast. So we went to like the Gold Coast, yeah, cool. um, Byron Bay, a lot of like little places wow. around there. Yeah, so, it was, awesome. was it one semester or? It was yeah. one semester. Yeah, it was my last semester of university. <laughs> oh wow, nice. Was there anything that like shocked you? Because I, I mean, I guess it's kind. Of, the culture is kind of similar, but was there like anything super weird that you super thought? Super weird. Or? There were a few things that like stood out to me. Yeah. So one of them was the party culture. Okay. They are crazy. They love to party. They love to like drink a lot. They love to party any day of the week. Um, and I just found like the party culture was really strong. Okay. Um, the other thing that stood out was like, the boys are very different. (laughs) Um, like just in like romantic relationships, I found like they were a lot more like, Like, I mean, (laughs) yes. Yeah, exactly. Like I feel like Canadian or like North American boys are very, they're more like romantic. Like they want to take you out for dinner, like just you know kind of like you see on tv and aussie boys were like oh yeah like yeah whatever and so like that was really weird for me yeah and just overall like i feel like our cultures are really similar like people always compare canadians and australians they're so relaxed like just the whole lifestyle i feel is very relaxed and i heard it's similar in new zealand as well like just like you guys get way more vacation days than us and just less of like a hustle culture and more of like an enjoy life kind of culture. I'm wondering like, I don't know, like the most useful course that you took. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Good question. I think there were two courses that were the most useful to me. 
uh, maybe three. One of them was managerial accounting, okay. which sounds so boring, yeah. but you learn all about how a business actually like makes money yeah. um, and how they manage their accounts. So things like, you know, I just thought that, okay, like company A makes clothing and you know, whatever they get paid by their suppliers and they get paid right away or sorry, they pay their suppliers, they pay them right away. But there's whole like inter-business like credit system where most of the time things don't get paid for right away. And you know, how do things accrue? Like mm -hmm. it was just really, really interesting to learn about accounting, which I guess makes me sound like a huge nerd, but I just feel like it taught me about like the fundamentals of a business. Yeah. And now I understand better. Like when I go into a store and I'm like, oh, this is so expensive. I kind of can do the calculations behind like, why is it so expensive? Like what yeah. goes into making a price of something? So I think that was really cool. Another one was like a behavioral finance class, which talks about like how people and their like the, psych the human psychology yeah. affects the stock market, which was really cool. And labor law. Like we learned about Canadian labor laws, which is just practical for your own daily life. <laughs> right. Awesome. So yeah, do you feel like your degree was worth it or do you feel like you learned a lot or was it more like um, experience that you liked or good question I guess it depends on what is meant by worth it because yes. in terms of uh, an investment yes it was worth it because you know I'm able to like get a good job with a business degree and whatever um was it worth all of the stress that I went through to get this degree and like all of the boring classes I don't know like sometimes I wish I had studied something else like something a little bit more creative because business school is very bland like what what are you studying I'm doing business as well okay so I don't know if you feel the same way that it can be very it's very practical I would say yeah um it's a practical degree like sometimes I wished I was like reading Shakespeare oh, really? um, yeah <laughs> So yeah, sometimes, sometimes I found it was a bit bland, um, but overall the experience was really good. Moving into kind of like career questions. So did you, cause you must've applied for like quite a few jobs and internships, right? Um, yeah. Did you like, did you ever have to deal with rejection or like, how did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah. And it's funny because like in high school, I never been rejected from any job because I was applying to like the ice cream store, you know? And every job I applied to, I pretty much got, or every job I interviewed for, I got. Um, and then, so when it came time to apply for internship, it was really hard. Like, I remember, I don't know if you know the company Shopify, they're like a big tech company. Oh, yeah, yeah, like e-commerce? Yeah, so I really wanted to do a summer internship at Shopify. Like, I really wanted to. And I remember my boyfriend at the time was like, that's a really hard company. Like, you're not going to get in there. Don't even bother applying. Yeah. And I was like, I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> and I got an intern. I got an interview. So I already showed him. Okay. Um, okay. But then I didn't get the job. And I was so disappointed. Oh, I cried God. for like a whole day. Like I was sobbing. Like you would think that like I got my heart broken. That's how like I was sobbing. Um, and I think, you know, that was my first big rejection. And then I had some other rejections too that like I cried, but you can't win them all. And that's kind of it. Sometimes the thing with jobs is it's so tricky. Like sometimes they will give you feedback. Sometimes you can ask for the feedback. Sometimes you ask and they don't give it to you. You know, there's so many reasons why you can get rejected and it's, yeah. it's hard not to take it personally, but you just got to move on, I guess. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. And I know you worked with the big four, like that's kind of how I found your channel. Um, mm -hmm. But because I'm like, I thought that was like my dream goal. But even now I'm like, maybe it'd be cool to just work for like a startup, you know, like a small company. Like, do you think it's overrated or do you think people should try and to aspire like to get into those companies? Or I definitely think it's overrated. I definitely think that in business school, especially there's this pressure of unless you work at big four, unless you work at, you know, big three that you're a failure. I certainly felt that way. I was constantly comparing myself to my peers who were getting these jobs. And I was like, well, if I don't get it, then I'm a loser, then I'm not smart enough, then I'm not successful. And it's just really not the case. But at the same time, I think startups can be overrated too. When you work at a startup, sometimes you are making no money, right? Because you're trying to get this company off the ground. Sometimes you are working insane hours at a startup. So I think it's really, people just need to think like about their individual self and like what their own working style is. If you're super structured and you love rules and you're very competitive, 
you will thrive in the big four. Yeah. If you yeah. are like, if you love doing lots of little tasks, you might thrive in a startup. And if you're kind of in between, you might thrive in like a medium sized company. And I just think we're not in school. We're not taught enough how to do that like inward reflection and think about what we want. And it's like, Oh, big four or nothing or like a cool startup or nothing. But there's so much in between yeah. that you can choose from and that you can have an amazing career at. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Are you thinking of going like big four? Or... I don't know. I'll probably just like apply and just go anywhere that takes me to be honest. <laughs> yeah. That, that works too. Because you, you never know what you like until you try it. Right. Yeah. All right. So I know like you did this, you're doing, oh, are you still doing the coding bootcamp thing? I'm so doing. how's it going? Like, <laughs> what, what? I what really like it. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm like just happy to be learning a new skill. Sometimes okay. I get really frustrated because like if my code doesn't work, I like get mad and I have to walk away from my computer for a little while. Yeah, it's cool. I guess finally, just some questions about Montreal. So, yeah. I actually I was gonna do an exchange there. So I should be there right now. But then you know. Oh no! We'd be filming this video in person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not because of COVID. But oh, yeah. that's too bad. Yeah, it sucks. What school were you going to go to? I think I was going to go to Concordia, which is where you Hey, yeah. 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 But anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, like, say someone has a weekend in Montreal. Like, what it, what would you recommend or what are the best spots, do you think? Oh, okay. So, if you have one weekend, well, are you, okay. So, Friday, you have to go out for dinner every night because okay. Montreal is really known for their restaurants. And there's really something for everybody. Like, if you like you know, different, um, like cuisines from different ethnicities, you have so many different options. So like you can kind of choose your palate and go there. Or if you want really like fancy, like European style dining, you can have that. Like we're very known for um, smoked meat. So if you're into that, you can go there. So you have to go out for dinner. If you like clubbing and like going out dancing, we have like a really big party scene, um, like really yeah. nice clubs. So Friday and Saturday, you know, there's so many places to choose from. Like, there's this one street, I guess, if anyone's listening and they're planning a trip, Saint Laurent Boulevard, okay. where there's just tons of clubs and then downtown as well. And then also in the old port. Yeah. So kind of like depending on your age and your vibe, you could choose the neighborhood that you want to go out in. And then during the day, like you have to visit the old port. People say that it's like mini Europe. It's lots of like stone buildings and stone streets. There's like a huge basilica that's like very famous and it's like very like European style. We have like a mountain in the middle of the city that's really nice that you can hike up. It's like an easy hike though. It's not nothing crazy. What else? You have to eat bagels, bagels with smoked salmon. That should <laughs> pretty much do you for the weekend. Okay, cool. Awesome. I guess another thing that people worry about is the cold weather. Like, yeah. <laughs> survive winter. Oh my gosh, I need those tips. I, okay, this is like so cheesy, but yeah. positive attitude. Okay. Because, <laughs> so when I was growing up, my mom like really hated winter and sometimes she'd be very negative and like she never had a nice word to say about the winter. But if you can convince yourself that it's not that bad and you can like really have a positive attitude, it's not that bad. Like you can survive. Um, and I think doing winter activities is really helpful too. Like if you can do snowshoeing or skiing, doing something outside to be like, okay, at least, you know, I'm having fun outside makes you more grateful for the snow and more tolerant of the cold weather. And also with, with French, like how important do you think it is? Like, do you need it to find a job? Or I don't think so. I don't think you need it to find a job. It's definitely a bonus. Like you will have an easier time if you do. But I have lots of friends that don't speak French and they've been able to have like really great jobs here in Montreal. Usually what, how it is, is like some companies are super French and some are super English. And so you'll just gravitate more towards the ones that are more Anglophone. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, Fun. Do you have anything <laughs> to add or? No, no, that's it. Cool. That's it. I think, awesome. yeah. I feel like we covered lots of fun stuff. Great. Well, um, yeah, I'll definitely put all your links in the description. So they awesome. can follow you and subscribe to your channel. Um, I think you're almost at like 15K. I'm very close. I'm 500 away from 15K. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Well, thanks yeah. so much. Um, good luck with, it, with everything. And uh, see you later, I guess. See you later. Bye. See ya. Bye.